need to be inspired by his topic, Transforming in a Digital World. All the way from Singapore, let's welcome Robin Speculant. Let's give him a warm welcome. Work with me for just a moment. Imagine the scenario. You've been called into the town hall meeting and everyone started to gather. There's a whisper going around the organization, an anticipation of something new. And as the music starts to play, the CEO walks onto the stage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've invited you today for the launch of our new digital strategy. It is a strategy that is going to be good for each and every one of us. It is a strategy that will be good for our customers and good for our stakeholders. But I alone can't make it happen. I need each and every one of you to come together. Not just as a department, not just as a team, but as a family. Because only as a family can we make our strategy come alive. Are you with me? Yes! And everyone's pumping and cheering and the music fades out. And the music fades and the CEO walks off the stage and two guys at the back of the room go, Alama, what was all that about? I don't know, but there's a free meal outside. Let's go and get something to eat. <laughs> On any given day, somewhere in the world today, there's a CEO launching a new digital strategy. But after all the fanfare, the emails, the WeChat, after all the messages, here's your last question of the day. Well, not really the last. The first in my session. What percentage of digital transformations are successfully implemented? What do you reckon? What percentage of digital transformations are successfully implemented? 20? Less than 20. Getting more pessimistic over there. 40? More optimistic? 10? Can you believe that with all the fanfare, everything that's going on around the world, two-thirds of digital transformations are failing? Two-thirds. So in the short time I have with you this afternoon, it's going to be my pleasure to tell you and share with you what's going on. And I've moved too, way, too far from the computer so the remote doesn't work. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, what we've seen over the last 20 years is that we were steadily improving in implementation, but suddenly we launch into digital transformation, alama, we start getting worse. And for the first time in 20 years, we're actually getting worse. And here's what's going on. Now, I've got about 27 minutes, and my goal is to shake up your thinking. Now, huh? Why? Well, if we're failing at something two-thirds of the time, is it fair to say that just maybe some of our thinking's not right? Just a little bit. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to change your thinking just a little bit in the 26 minutes I have left. Not radically reinvent the world. To innovate doesn't mean reaching for the stars. Sometimes it's just about being a little bit better than the competition. So this is a cycling race in Italy where the cyclist goes from last to first by being a bit more aerodynamic. Please don't try this at home. Or I hate 10 pin bowling, so I love this. Good, yeah? It is? Or for those who like the American football, it's about confusing the competition. And he scores. All right. Now, 
This is the first time for almost a decade I've got to meet maps. Um, I can't remember. Everything pre-pandemic has been too long ago. Okay? So I'm going to do a quick assessment, but I'm going to make it easy. Fact or myth? Okay, so I've got six questions for you. Are you ready? Here we go. Fact or myth? A digital ambition is a necessity to succeed in digital transformation? Fact. Fact. Oh, fact, man. Fact. You need to have a very clear digital ambition. What does digital mean to your organization? And you need to align the organization around it. So for example, I uh, better not mention names, uh, one of the very large conglomerates in Malaysia who does palm oil, I'm currently doing this with the board in the C-suite, yeah? Taking them through, what does it mean? Number two. Facebook can predict whether your relationship is going to last. Oh, you got that one. Okay. Not only can they predict whether it's going to last, they know who you're going to date as well. And you're worried about TikTok. Uh, number three, business leaders are accountable for technology changes. Uh, sorry, yeah, technology targets. Matter of fact, Ooh, failed that one. This is one of the strongest best practices I can give you. It's a fact. This breaks down the silo between technology and business. Very powerful. Number four. Younger employees are more acceptable to adopting digital. And, but thank you for playing. Wrong. This is another reason we fail so often. Again, I don't have the time today, but if, if you ask me during dinner tonight, I'll share with you. No, the older you are, the more valuable you are. Good news for many of us in the room. <laughs> Number five, digital transformation. Cost savings are greater than revenue generated. Myth. Myth? We agree? Myth. Myth. Well done. Our top line grows greater than our bottom line. Okay, and number six, the CEO leads digital transformation. Yeah. And but thank you for playing. Oh, I can't go over there. <laughs> it's a myth. What does? <laughs> All right. So my name is Robin Speculant. In a nutshell, what I do, one of the main consultancy houses walk out, I walk in. So I don't craft strategy, I implement it. And Singapore's home, I've been there 30 years. There's a trend this afternoon, you're either in digital or banking. I've done both. I was a regional VP for Citibank Asia Pacific on the corporate. And for the last, since 2014, focused on digital implementation. Now, People struggle, what is digital transformation? Okay, we'll give you the first one, okay? So here we go again. There's a massive movement. We've heard about, you've all heard generative AI and uh, machine learning. So let me give you some examples of what's happening in companies today. Now for those in business, you'll get it straight away. For the speakers in the room, this screen is relevant because you need to know this for your clients because this is what they're doing. So here we go. A traditional company is pre-digital, who said, hang on guys, we need to move into the digital world. So they go from profit to what? Oh, you're not quiet now. <laughs> Shareholder, uh, sorry, stakeholder value, okay? So we've now thrown out shareholder value, and it's about stakeholder, your community, your environment, um, your employees. We go from controlling to? Well done, empowerment. We go from silos to? Not just teams, no, no. Platforms and ecosystems. And if you're scratching your head going, huh, oh, what are platforms and ecosystems? You need to do your homework. From planning to, not implementation, experimentation. 
It's no longer about having the solution in one go. We now use our design thinking, our hackathons. From product centric to customer centric. And from tweaking to whole organization transformation. Okay. I have shared these slides with Matt, so um, you, they'll share them with you with pleasure. So, three reasons why digital transformation fails. Why is it two-thirds of the time it fails? I'm going to make you work hard. It's the audience that can turn the back. Okay? Okay? So, the only thing control holding me back is the controller. Okay? Top three reasons why digital transformation fails. First one. I know you don't believe it. Really? Senior Absolutely. Yeah. So many employees go, oh, I really, my, I'm so frustrated. My boss keeps asking me for the printout. He doesn't believe the data. I've got to bring, I've got to still prepare a part. <gasps> Senior leaders. Number two. Okay. Uh, we just heard you know, how critical culture is. We work in silos. We work in cubicles. Now we want to move to hackathons, design thinking, we've got to break down the silos. And number three, it's not about tweaking your website or tweaking your app. We call that digital lipstick. Okay. Digital lipstick. It's about whole organization transformation. So true or false? So here is my key takeaway. You've been flat out the whole day of nothing else tomorrow when you think back to Robin's presentation. Here's my key takeaway. It's not about having a digital strategy, but a strategy in a digital world. Huh? Now, is it just semantics? No. When you have a strategy in a digital world, you have a much broader perspective. You're much more aware of what's happening around you. Politics, geopolitics, inflation, interest rates. I'll put it another way, a bit of terminology, so I'll put it a little more easier. The winds of change blow harder and faster externally today than they do internally. Wow. End the day on a bit of profound. But it's true, isn't it? Outside of your world, things are changing faster. Why do we come to these conferences? Because we're trying to catch up with all the things that are going on today. And it's rapidly changing. And for leaders and organizations, this is our same challenge. Okay? Things are rapidly changing around us. Now, at the heart of digital transformation is... Uh, but thank you for playing someone. We've known each other 20 years, so appreciate the input. But, uh. <laughs> Not people either. Yeah. I think I need more than half an hour, guys. <laughs> At the heart of digital transformation is no processes. Yeah. No culture. I still, no, not the way, I still can't believe no one said it. No, I'm not that either. Not ambition or, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, this is seriously concerning. Because? I mean, really? Hey, yeah. Um, Everything, now, initially, when we, um, I was very fortunate. I got started in digital in 2014. I was working with a small bank in Singapore called DBS. Um, Piyush Gupta, the CEO, and I were colleagues at City, and we started working, and I was working with um, a brand many of you will know, LVMH, the Louis Vuitton Group. Both of the, and they brought over Ian Rogers from Apple. Both of them have started at digital. And from 2014, we, you know, initially we were all about the technology. But we learned very quickly, of course, it's not the technology, 
That's the means to the end. The end of what? About creating a better, greater experience for your customers. All this talk about the technology and the methodology you use, that's why you need a clear, articulated digital ambition. Which aspects? For banking, for example, we use blockchain and AI. I also work, um, which ones have I published? I work with commercial real estate. And for them, it's all about IoT, the Internet of Things. So what does digital mean to your business? How are you going to leverage it and use it? Now, because I'm walking around, I have no idea how much time I have left. So somebody would like to tell me, how are we doing for time, guys? TJ, how long are we doing? 14 minutes. Oh, I still got 14 minutes? Okay, okay. All right, so good. I don't need to make that time. Thank you, man. Okay, so I'm going to share. I have two last things to share with you. I'm going to share with you eight tips for success that for those of speakers in the room, you can take this back and use it with your organization. And for those in business, you can just use it. All right? And then I've got a few fun slides just to end. And then we go back in. Is okay? Yes. All right, here we go. <laughs> what, so Malaysian, my can first. <laughs> okay, so eight tips. I'm going to show you the eight tips and then you're going to um, have a, see which one is most relevant to you. All right, so I'll make it easy for you. I'll go up front for this one. <laughs> to succeed, you need to eliminate confusion. Huh? When you launch into your digital transformation, people are going, any transformation is confusing, never mind digital for that matter. How do we do it? With the digital ambition. The most critical thing is alignment between departments, divisions. I'll give you a little teaser. Business is about to be revolutionized. We're going from what's called vertical organizations we keep having to go up, get permission, prepare for meetings, get sign off, get budgets, to what we call horizontal organizations, where you work with agility at scale, uh, DDOMs, data driven operating models, and empowerment. It's going to revolutionize the way we work. We're just at the cusp of a revolution. To succeed, you need to blow up bureaucracy and paper. Yeah? We're so red taint, we gotta get rid of it. Digital gives us the ability to do it. We can work faster and better. To succeed, you need to... <laughs> do I need to say any more? How many of you spend nine to six in meetings? Yeah? And when do you do your work? From six to nine. Yeah, that's six, you know, to nine a.m. Okay. To succeed, you need to eliminate silos. You're going to fail in digital if you try and do hackathons, design thinking, um, customer journey mapping, if you're siloed, because people are competing. I was working with a company in South Africa, and they were failing at customer journeys. Why? Because everybody had their own agenda, their own silo, and they were competing in meetings rather than collaborating. So encourage cross-functional teams to collaborate. To succeed, you need to stop predominantly focusing on technology. What do you focus on? You have to balance an equal measure of empathetic creativity and technological prowess with a dose of tenacity. Okay, that was me, not generative AI who wrote that, okay? <laughs> so you've got to balance it. To succeed, you need to stop expecting more without training your people. You can't send them to do design thinking without preparing them. You can't expect them to start using data-driven models without teaching them data analytics. So we're going to train people. You've got to become lifelong learners, including the leaders. And to succeed, you need to stop relying only on intuition and have a data-driven operating model. I'll summarize this one very succinctly. The better the decision, uh, sorry, the better the data, the better the decisions. So here we go. Number eight, stop relying on legacy leadership. 
Just because we were, uh, you had a profit last year is no guarantee you'll have a profit next year. And leaders need to rethink. I'll give you a lovely example. Here's one of my favorites. Do you know how leaders, oh, you got time to work again. You know how leaders typically are the first person to speak in a meeting? In a digital driven company, they're the last person to speak. Huh? Why? Because now they have to listen and find out what's going on in the company. Because you're empowered through hackathons, design thinking, customer journey mapping, data analytics, and you're making the changes happen through your scrums, through your agile at scale. So here we go. Can you turn to a partner, please? Rub your hands together if you're not COVID sensitive. Give them a high 10 and say, good afternoon, partner. How are we doing for time? That's it. Okay, you've got three minutes with your partner. Which is your favorite tip for yourself or your customer or your client or your business? Three minutes, which is your favorite tip with your partner? Go.
I get a little bit of that one. Okay. How, who's got the kids? Who's got the babies and the nappy still? Yeah? Okay. How often remember lifting up your son or daughter and gently? Huggies came up with a solution. They put a sensor in the nappy. So when your baby pees, your phone beeps and you know you need to change the nappy. Good or not? Oh, tough audience, CD. What am I going to do? Oh, my man. Uh, that's why we have the maid in Singapore. <laughs> okay. Um, those in supply chain, okay, we now have what we call oops, dark warehouses. And we call them dark warehouses because they're 24 7 run by AI and robotics. And you never have to put the lights on. Mm -hmm. So, this is a big movement that's happening in supply chain. Have you heard of Wi Fi? You know Wi Fi. Have you heard of Wi Fi? Yeah. Wi Fi is a thousand times faster than Wi Fi coming soon. Yeah. Okay. Wi <laughs> Fi. And my last one you've just done the washing, and instead of having to do the ironing, you throw it into the ironing box. You put it in at the bottom clean, and it comes out folded and pressed on top. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, CJ, thank you for the invitation to speak today. I've got one more story I'm going to end with. Okay? True or false, by the way. I mean, so many speakers today. Let's say three minutes till I forgot uh, what I said. Okay? Yeah, thanks. Okay? So it's been a pleasure to have the opportunity to speak with you today. I've got one more farewell story I'm going to give you before we break for the, the and then come back for the gala dinner. Uh, but I'd like to thank the, the team and recognize all the effort that goes into putting the conference together. Terry McCassie, you're going to run your applause. So my final story is the manager in hell. This is a story of a manager walking across to the photocopying machine, and he has a heart attack on the spot, and he drops dead. And everyone gathers around, and they look down at the manager, and go, eh, and go back to work. He wasn't a bad manager, but he wasn't a good manager. Meanwhile, the soul of the manager drifts up to heaven. And the gates of heaven are closed. And in front of the gates is a beautiful white angel. And the angel says to the manager, Before I let you into the gates of heaven, I want you to have a look at hell. Because heaven is for eternity. And he's like, Oh, I made it to heaven. Okay. And the angel directs him and he walks backwards into the lift. And the lift door shuts, and he presses H, and it goes all the way down, 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 all the way to the depths of hell. And the lift door is open, and in front of him is all his wildest dreams. Everything he ever dreamed about, everything he ever wanted. There's saliva dripping down his mouth. And the lift door shut, and the lift goes back up, 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 up to heaven. And he looks out, so he walks out from the lift. And the gates of heaven open. And the angel says, Are you ready now to enter heaven for eternity? And he thinks, Ha, ah, hell, not so bad. Oh, my wife with the screens, everything I ever... I'm going to hell! And before the angel can stop him, he runs back into the lift. He presses eight, the lift door shut. The lift goes down, 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 all the way down to the depths of hell. And the lift door is open. And two hands grab him. There's sulfur dropping from the ceiling. There's tremendous flames all around him. They drag him across a flameless floor. And they throw him down in front of a bottomless pit. And he shouts out, What happened? Last time I was here, it was all my wildest dreams. And this booming voice echoes, Last time you were here, you were a prospect. Now you are our customer! I wish you all the success on your 
transformation and may you end up in heaven with your customers and not hell. Have a wonderful evening. My name is Robin Spengler from the